that ever happened to you? It's a very common problem when cars get old that the Stabilitrack and the ABS and the traction control and all that stuff just starts to intermittently die on you. And it's usually because of the wheel sensor on one of the four wheels uh, either going bad or, you know, an electrical problem from corrosion. So first step in diagnosing uh, a wheel sensor problem, which is, which is the root cause of these uh, Stabila track and ABS issues is to jack the car up uh, in the air first, put it on jack stands like I've done here. Once you got the car up on the stands like this, you can see from removing the tire uh, that white wire right there. That's the uh, wire that goes to the the uh, wheel bearing. And inside the wheel bearing is the wheel speed sensor. Now each one of the wheels has one of these sensors in it. And all four of them have to be fully functional at all times in order for the traction control system and the ABS and all the related subsystems to work properly. If at any time the signal from one of these wheel sensors from any of the wheels uh, gets interrupted, you know, becomes intermittent, or it fails altogether, the whole system will fail and you'll lose everything. All your stability track and ABS and traction control will, will go and you'll get you know messages in your in your dashboard indicating that. A lot of the time, you know, you send it to your mechanic, he'll just want to replace the wheel bearing uh, and that'll be expensive. You gotta pay for the parts and the labor to re replace it and all that. But sometimes it's really nothing. Sometimes it's just an intermittency from this uh, connector, for example. This wiring harness might not be fully clipped in all the way and that could be giving uh, you know, a, a discontinuity, like the, the signal's not continuous, and the computer gets confused and disables the system if that happens. So sometimes you just need to like disconnect this, clean it with some contact spray or something, and reconnect it and get a good electrical connection there. Um, other times you'll have an issue with the other half of the harness, the, the part of the harness that actually goes to the car, which is this piece over here. Check the condition of this, uh, shroud, this plastic shroud that covers the cable, if it's uh, damaged in any way, that, that could mean that you're getting a shorting going on between the wires. If they're shorting out, then that again could cause an electrical issue that would confuse the computer and that would have to be um, patched up, repaired, and then you have to find out what's actually causing it to wear away in the first place. Um, one thing you can do, uh, again, you know, safety permitting, once you've established that you've got a safe way of doing this, is to actually try to simulate the problem while it's on the jack stands in midair like this. So what you can do is if you've got two people, um, you know, you put one person in the car, put the car uh, in park or make sure it's in park initially when you start the car up, uh, have the person put their foot on the brakes to make sure that nothing spins. And then while their foot's on the brake, you put it in drive and, uh, and then you can have them release the brake, uh, you know, while you're clear of the vehicle so that you're not going to get hurt and you can see the rotor spin, and then they can turn the steering wheel back and forth to simulate turning hard left, turning hard right, and you can see the travel of this cable. You can see how it moves when the, uh, when the whole steering assembly rotates left or rotates right, and if there's any kind of uh, binding or stretching of the cable or it's rubbing on something, you'll be able to possibly see that. So, as you can see, the wheel's spinning now, and if you, if, you turn the, uh, if you turn the wheel, you can see how that cable moves around. And you can see for this, in the case of this one, it looks like it's fairly uninhibited. It doesn't look like it's actually damaged or uh, doesn't look like it's rubbing anything or, or stretching or pulling on anything. So let's go and have a quick look around the other side of the vehicle and take a look at that one. All right, so now we're on the, the right-hand side of the vehicle over here. And where's the where's this one here? Uh, just a second. I gotta find it. Okay, there we go. All right, so here you've got, you can, you can see the color of the wire is different. Uh, that's because the driver's side wheel bearing was recently replaced, and this one is the original. So that's, um, 
blue wire, I guess, on this on the on the original, and the other one was white, I guess. And if we look underneath, you can see here something's been going on here. Clearly, the cable has been eroded or damaged by something rubbing against it, um, and I suspect this is what's causing the problem because the system only fails intermittently and only when making left-hand turns. So something involving a left-hand turn is causing these wires, which are now exposed from, from the damage, uh, to possibly short or become intermittent, you know, uh, some other way. I think that they're probably shorting because enough of the insulation has been ground away that, uh, you know, turning the wheel fully over to the left-hand side is causing them to short on each other and give that uh, indicator light inside the car. So, what I want to do with this to see if I can fix the problem before I, you know, waste money on a mechanic is I want to wrap these wires in electrical tape and try to protect them a little bit better than they are now and see if the problem goes away. And if that solves it, then it may not be a permanent fix, but at least you know what the problem is and you can possibly save your money at the mechanic shop by telling him, hey, this is what the problem is, so don't bother wasting your time checking every little thing. You know, just, you know, it's a wire that needs to be repaired or whatever and you need to figure out what's causing this thing to get, you know, uh, sanded away in the first place. Okay, so I've got some electrical tape here. Again, this is not a permanent solution, but it's going to be a means of testing the hypothesis that the wire being, uh, you know, eroded away or worn away is actually uh, what's causing the issue here. So you can see right there, oops, right there, this is the damaged wire or the wire I suspect is damaged. I'm gonna take each individual strand you can see the outer insulation's already been torn away and you can see the wires underneath. So I'm going to take the wires that are inside and wrap each one individually in some tape. And then once I've wrapped them individually, then I'm going to wrap the entire bundle in tape. And we'll see if isolating those wires from each other actually fixes the issue. Uh, and if, you know, if we see the, the message come up anymore on the, on the dashboard when we're driving around and turning the wheel. Cars on. I don't have a traction control light yet. So anyway, this this is a quick way that you can diagnose and kind of uh, spot repair this very common vehicle issue that happens on older vehicles, right in the safety of your own driveway without having to spend any money. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's enough, and you can save yourself a few hundred bucks. So.